Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Unreal AR tutorial. In this video, we're going to go through how we can get image tracking working with the AR Core system, and we're going to be using specifically the AR Core SDK provided by Google. So this does unfortunately mean that this probably won't work cross-platform with AR Kit, but there is already content out there showing how to get the integrated Unreal version of AR Kit working. Um, and unfortunately, as of the current build of Unreal, which is 4.21, I still can't find a way to get the built-in integration working successfully with image tracking. So what we want to do first of all is go over to the AR Core Unreal uh, developers page, which is going to be this link here, and I'll provide this in the description below. And what we're looking for is this link, which is the link to the AR Core Unreal SDK. Now, if this link ever changes or if this gets removed for some reason, just Google AR Core Unreal SDK, and that's going to bring you to the correct place, which will be this GitHub link. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to download the SDK from here, but we're going to skip the version 1.6 just because I haven't been able to get this working. There's a strange issue where it says that the get extent has been depreciated. So we want to get estimated size, which would be fine, but it seems as though they haven't actually included the get estimated size function into that build. So there's just always a, uh, a compilation error in the demonstration they provide. So we're going to skip this version for now. What we're going to do is we're going to go back down to version 1.5 because I've been able to get that one building perfectly fine. All we want to do here is download the Unreal SDK, the zip file. We don't need either of the source code files. And once you have that downloaded, just extract that to a folder of your choice. Okay, so once you have that extracted, you should have the folder structure as so. So you've got the AR Core Unreal SDK 1.5. And inside of this, you should have several folders. Now you've got the Cloud AR pin, the computer vision and the Hello AR, which if you've watched my previous videos, we've covered the Hello AR. This was just an alternative to the standard Unreal template. Now, we're actually going to use the SDK version, like I mentioned, because this is the only way I can get the images working at the moment for the image track. So if we go into the augmented images, we actually have a full demonstration project. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through how things are set up, what the certain functionalities and the nodes are doing, and I'm going to show you an example of getting your own image into this project. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is that I've only been able to get this to work in Unreal Engine 4.21. 4.20 technically should support this, but for whatever reason, when I do exactly the same build to that version of the Unreal Engine, the application just opens and then closes straight away. Um, and after a day or two of trying to debug this and work out what was happening, I've just accepted that 4.21 works. So I'd highly recommend downloading that version of the engine if you can to follow along with this. So with that said, just double click on the Unreal Engine project file, choose the version of the engine you want to use, which like I said, I'd highly recommend 4.21, and then you should be ready to go. Okay, so of course I've done all of that ahead of time as well. I haven't actually changed anything in this project yet, so this is going to be the default project that you'll be working with as well. Before we do dive into this, I've been getting some questions about how I've got my project set up. People are saying they're having issues building to their devices, errors, and just black screens and things like that. Um, and what, what I'm going to say is that I don't have the direct answer to any of those things, unfortunately. Uh, I really quite dislike working with mobile devices just because of the amount of different options you have to set things up. And unfortunately, the documentation can be a little bit lacking, a little bit outdated quite quickly. Uh, and there never seems to be like a go-to answer for the exact SDK engine version and things like that, which will synergize well. So unfortunately, all I can say is that I'm always going to provide what I build my specifications to. So you can always go by those because I'm only going to show working examples. But besides that, otherwise you're going to have to do some trial and error and find out what works for you. One thing that has been mentioned that I'll run through very quickly is that I've got 4.2 installed, obviously, in 4.21. Inside of the 4.2, if we go to the engine and the extras, we go to our Android works. Uh, we have the option in Win64 to install the 1R6U1. That's the version I still have installed just because it works. People have mentioned that the version 4.21 does come with now the, uh, again, in the extras, Android works and Win64. It comes with the R17U1. Now, I haven't actually installed that yet. I haven't tried it. Some people have said that their builds have stopped working since doing that. Um, and again, all I can recommend is look at the documentations, see if... Google or Unreal have confirmed that 1R7U1 is supported fully and working with the Unreal Engine. If not, then don't use it and just step back. Um, and I have had success with the 1R6U1 working with 4.21, even though it comes with a different version as standard. So again, this is what I mean. It just comes down, unfortunately, to trial and error and seeing what will work. 
And just to confirm this and show what I mean, if we go to the NV pack where I've got everything installed, if we click on the chooser, this is going to bring up the Android component manager. And you can see that I'm still working with 1R6U1. So that's what I'm going to be doing my build with, just so you know exactly what I'm running to get this working uh, and to show the working example. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, the main functionality and the logic setup in here is actually in the default map that opens. So you should be in the augmented images map, which is just here. And the logic, uh, which I actually don't like this approach, I'd personally put all of this into a pawn class or something. Uh, they've got one here, they just haven't used it, the augmented images pawn. But they've chosen to put the logic in the blueprints and the level blueprints. So just go to blueprints, open level blueprint, and this is where all of the image tracking logic is housed. So we're just going to very quickly go through what the logic's doing. Like I said, there's not actually very much going on. Um, and then you can tear this apart and do with this as you need for your projects. So like we've seen in all of the other AR tutorials I've provided, uh, it's doing the standard thing, it's creating an AR session. Specifically here, it's the AR core session, so you can hit the magnifying glass and you can see exactly what the settings for this are. They've all been left as default from what I can see. It's then creating a tracking state overlay widget. So again, if you want to see what's happening in there, then we just hit the magnifying glass and go over here. Uh, but it's simply a window and it's going to uh, give you a, a decent idea of where the image should fit for it to be tracked successfully. So that's actually really, really handy. Now on top of that, this is very similar to what we did previously with the geometry tracking. It's then getting all of the geometry that it's got tracked or found uh, casting to see if that is an image this time. So seeing if it's a Google AR augmented image rather than a geometry. And then if it is this logic, I'm not going to go through this node by node because there is quite a bit going on, but it's like you can see very, very simple. Uh, it's finding out which pictures are being tracked and I'll show you how that's done in a second. And if that has been tracked, then it's just going to spawn an image which is called the picture frame. And that's just a, a 3D object from what I can see, uh, looking like a kind of ornamental image frame. And it's going to try as best it can to fit that around the image that you have tracked. With that done, it's just ex uh, adjusting the extents so that the image fits in properly. Um, and it's going to set the transform frame. So this is actually quite handy if you want to move the image around. It should be able to kind of track that. I found this a little bit laggy, but again, I'll show you that in a demonstration in a moment. And then here is just setting an extent of that object. So like I said, very simple logic. Uh, this, All of this is the logic here, which is finding the location of the tracked image. So again, if you didn't want the image frame, then just look at what, what this is doing, where it's placing things, and change that to spawn your object on top of that or in the same location, but in a different way, depending on how you wanted that to work. Now the important thing, like I mentioned, is we have our config, which is going to be the important thing. And that configuration has a reference to the image library. So we can see up here we have the augmented image database. So again, if we click the magnifying glass, we're going to go to the augmented images database. And this is all of the images that this is tracking. So it's actually got 16 pre-installed for us. Uh, of course, they probably know that you're going to add your own images, which is what we're going to do. And to do that, all I've done for this example, just to show how um, accurate this can actually be, is I've just taken a picture on my mobile phone of the Super Smash Brothers game package. And I'm going to go into the location where all of the images are stored. I'm going to right click and import asset to the project. I've saved mine on the desktop, so I've just loaded in there. And it's the AR demo image. So just import an image that you want to track, that you have something nearby that you can... Uh, that you're going to be able to track. And we can see that this will import this. That's all perfectly fine by default. It's not even a very good picture, but like I said, it's actually quite impressive that this will work um, pretty much straight away. Now with that imported into the project, we're just going to go back to the database. We're going to drop all of these back down. So shift and click to drop everything back in one go. We're going to add a new element to the array and we just want to add a reference to our image in here. Okay, so I've got just here the AR demo image. We can see that's the Smash Bros casing and with that done, we've now actually set this up to work with our own image. And that's pretty much all we needed to do to get this working. So we can now, if you wanted, you can clear the other elements, but it's not really going to take any more time. So I'm going to have a problem with those in there. So I'm just going to leave this as it is to get this working. With that done, I'm just going to launch this to my device. Okay, so I'm just uh, showing the recording from my phone now. We're going to be trying to find the image. You can see it picks it up fairly quickly. It adds the photo frame around the image. You can also see that if I try and pick it up and move it, it's slowly, it's kind of laggy, not quite what you'd hope for, but it definitely follows it around so it keeps that updated, which is pretty nice. So here we have the working version of the AR image tracking. So like I mentioned, this is the only way that I can see to get it working at the moment. Uh, now one thing I have, 
One thing I have mentioned, and this is going to be interesting to see what you all think about this, is that I'm more than happy to cover the same kind of topics, but in Unity. So a few years ago, I had experience. My programming career kind of started with game design and Unity, and then I moved over to Unreal. And it's kind of weird that actually, even three or four years ago, when I first started doing that, some of the packages for AR in Unity were probably slightly further ahead than they are at the moment in Unreal, especially with AR Core. So I'd be quite interested to see what people's feedback would be to see things like covering of Euphoria inside of Unity. And of course, their AR Core package inside of Unity as well is available. It's something which will be slightly different for sure. The coding isn't too intense, that it's uh, C sharp, so it's very simple to understand. And there's not a whole lot of programming you need to do anyway. It's kind of similar that the main aspects are going to be getting the SDKs and the packages kind of working with the game engine uh, and then the actual coding of how to get it working. There's a lot of templates which come with the important bulk of the, the work done anyway and then actually adding your own stuff is going to be very simple. So definitely let, leave some comments below. Let me know what you think about that. Uh, this for the time being I think is where I'm going to leave the AR mobile stuff in Unreal just because it definitely isn't as fully featured as I hoped it would be by now. And it really isn't very easy to set up. It's definitely possible. And when I say easy, I mean more in the case of to get it working universally for a lot of people. If I show you how to just deploy something to desktop for a, a simple runner game like I've done in the past, for example, that works for 99% of the people. There are very few times that I get mass comments about things not working. When it comes to mobile, unfortunately, that just doesn't seem to be the case at the moment. There's far too many use case scenarios. And I just, as much as I'd love to, I just don't have the time to try and help everyone and then you're just kind of left unable to get things working which I know and appreciate is frustrating so just at the moment it's not really something which is necessarily viable to cover in much more depth as updates and stuff come out though I'm definitely going to be jumping in and out to see where things are and as soon as things become more universally catered for especially when things start getting built in as a whole package so you can do the AR core and the AR kit together all directly through the Unreal Engine I'll definitely be jumping back on and seeing what I can do and show you guys them. So I'm going to leave this video here for now. As always, if you've enjoyed the videos or found them useful, please do leave that like and share the video around. That always helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.